Tonight we're going to talk about unraveling iOS encryption and learning about it in a way that you can impress your friends and clients with your knowledge. A little bit about me. My name is Michelle Bousquet. I have a master's in computer science with a focus on security that I got from Boston University in January 2017, so it's fairly new. Before that, I worked in computer graphics for a long time. And I'm also an assistant teacher of an online mobile forensics class at BU. When I took mobile forensics at Boston University, it was one of the first graduate level classes offered in the world. And um, I was such an enthusiastic student that after I graduated, they hired me as an assistant teacher. So I still do that. I enjoy it very much. And in fact, mobile forensics is my favorite thing in the whole world. Well, maybe not the whole world. I, I this ice cream and a few other things. iOS encryption. You've probably heard some things about it. Apple came up with a brilliant encryption scheme. There is something called the Secure Enclave. Um, when I asked around a little bit before I was going to do this presentation and I said, hey, what do you know about iOS encryption? A lot of people said, oh, with the secure enclave. And then I said, well, OK, do you know what that is? And you got some different kinds of answers. So have you ever heard of it? Do you know what it is? See a show of hands. OK, well, we're going to talk about what that is at a high level. Again, the secure enclave was introduced with the iPhone 5S in 2013. Most of what we know about iOS security, we learn from the iOS security guide, which is a PDF that Apple puts out periodically, pretty much every time there's a new iOS. And uh, you can use it to learn all about iOS encryption, supposedly. Um, you know, Apple puts this out and it's all about their transparency and, oh yes, we're going to tell you all about it. But it seems to be written in such a way that you're sure to like not want to read it and that you probably won't understand it. So it's pure pleasure if you, you know, if you like pain. All right, so let's talk a little bit about iOS's security goals because this will help us understand their uh, encryption scheme. So one of the things they wanted to do is have a strong encryption scheme, of course, so it would be hard to break. Now, one thing that's important to know is the only way to put a file on an iPhone is through an app. This is not like uh, a hard disk in your computer where you can make a file and just like put it wherever you want. On any kind of smartphone, all the files go through apps. This is probably something you've never thought about, but now that you know, it's like, oh, of course, you know. So it knows when an app is about to save a file, and so it can encrypt it through that. Um, also, they wanted the encryption scheme to be different for different phones so that, say, you know, some hacker did get a hold of a phone and was able to break, somehow or other, break the encryption on that phone, he would not have the encryption key or encryption keys for every single iPhone. There couldn't be this, like, wholesale um, invasion of phones. Also, tying the encryption to the passcode means that if you want to change up your encryption keys, all you have to do is change your passcode, which is a really nice way to empower users with regard to their encryption. And also, something that would have a fast wipe and reset. And where this comes into play is, say you had an encryption scheme where you encrypt every single file on the phone with the same encryption key. One way to do a fast wipe or reset is to just like throw away the encryption key. But then you can't use that encryption key again, so you wouldn't be able to use something that was burned in. You know, So you have to kind of think through these things about how are you going to make these things happen. And in my opinion, Apple came up with an absolutely brilliant way to do it. So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, first of all, when um, you go up to Quora or someplace like that, and you see these questions like, how does iOS encryption work? You know. You think, oh, this can be a good way for me to get sort of a basic level understanding. But the problem is that what usually happens is that the person who answers you pulls this diagram out of the iOS security guide and throws it up there. This is how they explain file encryption. <laughs> and if you can understand this diagram, you know, I want to buy you a drink because I, once I go through this explanation, you will be able to understand this diagram. But I, again, I think Apple puts that up there so they can say, see, we're explaining it to you, but they're not really. So instead, I'm going to use Russian dolls to explain it because that makes a lot more sense to me. All right, so let's get right into this here and talk about the secure enclave and what it is. 
So most of you probably have this basic understanding of it. It's something that lives on the phone's chip. The A7 is one of the chips that has this. And a request goes into the secure enclave, and it goes through this mailbox so that um, you know only, only certain requests are processed. Hackers can't just request stuff from the secure enclave. And once it gets cleared by the mailbox, some magical encryption stuff happens, and then a result gets spit out from the secure enclave. Okay, so now you know. That's the end of the presentation. Just kidding. All right, let's talk a little bit about what happens. One thing I can tell you is that the secure enclave includes a random number generator. And we're going to build on, over the course of this presentation, I'm going to build on what goes into the secure enclave and what it's made of. So this is just the beginning here. So this, just know there's a random number generator in there. It's a really good one because it's from Apple and they made sure and it is used to generate keys when needed. All right, so let's look at this a little bit more. If we're going to look at how individual files are encrypted, we need several kinds of encryption keys. Apple actually uses five different kinds of encryption keys and does different things with them to achieve encryption. So those five are the file system key, class keys, the UID, and the GID to some extent, and the passcode is actually used as part of the encryption process as well. So let's look at the keys that are generated from the random number generator. There's the file system key and class keys. Um, each file falls into a different class with regard to protection. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but there's class keys that are used. So just take my word for it for now that these are two different kinds of keys and their use will become more apparent as we go through how they're used. But anyway, the way that they're generated is when there's a new uh, operating system install or different kinds of reset. It doesn't create these keys every day or you know several times a day. It's more like once every few months or however often um, between these major events on your phone. And they are stored outside the secure enclave. Some stuff is stored inside the secure enclave, but not a lot. Most of it is stored in the phone store. So let's take a look at this. So inside the secure enclave, we have something called a crypto engine. And this does all kinds of different magical encryption-y stuff. <laughs> so a request comes in for a key, and the crypto engine asks the random number generator to generate one, and then it spits out the key. So in this case, we're requesting a file system key and a class key. And again, this happens when uh, a new operating system is installed, for example. And then it takes these keys and it stores them in the phone storage. The file system key is stored in something called effaceable storage, which is this erasable, not terribly secure storage. Um, and that's OK, and I'll explain why in a minute. And then the class keys are stored in a, something called the key bag. And this is a place where the system expects to find keys and other security related information. It's just a section of phone storage set aside for that. So you might look at this and go, OK, it spits out this key and then it just sits in storage. Like that does not seem very secure. Well, what it does is it encrypts the keys first. And this is how that works, is that these other keys that are used for that are these burned in keys. And one of them is the unique ID, the UID. And this is probably what you've heard the most about. It's a key burned into the processor at the time of manufacturer. Each one is different. Apple does not keep track of them, and it can't be read by firmware or software. So this is super secure, and um, this is why when the FBI asked Apple for the encryption key for the San Bernardino phone, uh, Apple said, we don't know, and we have no way of finding out. So, you know. Also, there's something called the GID, the group ID, and this is per processor, it's not unique. So if you and I have uh, phones with the same processor, our GID is going to be the same, and this is compiled into the processor at manufacture time. And, you know, the iOS security guy doesn't really talk too much about how this is used, just that it is used. So I'm not going to talk about it too much here. Mostly I'm going to talk about the UID, but you'll get the general gist of how these things are used just from that. And they both live in the secure enclave. Those, these are both stored there, I guess you could say. So let's take a look at that here. So we have the mailbox where stuff comes in, 
and then the crypto engine and we have the UID and GID stored there and also the random number generator. All right, so let's take a look and review here. We have the random generated file system key and class keys. We have the UID and GID burned in at manufacturer, and then we have the passcode, which is user generated. So those are our five kinds of keys that we've got. All right, so let's take a look at how this works with the class key. Remember, the class key was not very securely stored, at least when we last looked at it. So here we get a request for the class key and the passcode. And those go into the secure enclave. And the passcode and the UID get mixed up together. They, the iOS security guide actually calls it entangled. And they don't really tell you what entangled means. Like, I don't know, does it sprinkle them together? Anyway, those get entangled, and that makes an encryption key. And that key is used to encrypt the class key, and the encrypted class key is then spit out from the secure enclave. So we don't actually ever see the class key. The class key is like never exposed because a request goes in and what comes out is an encrypted class key. And that's what gets stored in the key bag. And the same thing happens with the file system key. We get a request. The UID is used to encrypt the file system key. And then the file system key pops out and that is saved in the effaceable storage. As I mentioned, these keys are created when you install the operating system. So now we're all done with the OS and we're ready to do some day-to-day -day operations with our phone. So for everyday use for encrypting individual files, we are going to use the file system key and the class keys. Now remember, these are both encrypted and stored on the phone, but they're available. So we're ready to encrypt some individual files. But before we do, let's see a little bit about what class keys are. Each file saved by an app belongs to a class. There's four basic classes. It's based on protection level. And the app developer is the one who decides what the protection level is. So I'm not going to talk too much about what files belong to which classes. Just know that there's different classes and there's different class keys for them. And if you want to look it up in the iOS security guide, it actually goes into that quite a bit. Another important thing to know is that on a phone, as with a hard disk, every file has metadata. And the file's content is stored separately from its metadata. This is going to be important in understanding how individual files are encrypted. So the steps are the file's contents are fed to the secure enclave. And then the random number generator generates a per file key just for that file. This is going to be the only file on the phone that has that key. And then it encrypts, and then the secure enclave pops it out, and it gets st stored in phone storage. So let's just take a look at that. And this is pretty straightforward and easy to understand. The file goes in, gets encrypted, and pops out. And now the per file key, note that it hasn't left the secure enclave. It is used to encrypt the file, and the encrypted file is popped out, but not the per file key. So here's my little Russian doll diagram to show this. So you have your file contents encrypted by the per file key. And then nobody can actually see the per file contents unless they have the key to open the doll and look inside, right? So now this begs the question, so what do we do with this per file key? We're not going to store it in the secure enclave. I mean, this, how many zillions of files are on your phone? And if we're going to store it, in the phone storage, it needs to be encrypted too and also needs to be associated with that individual file since every file has a different key, right? So we need to encrypt it. So what are we going to encrypt it with? Well, let's take a look at our options. We could use the class key and the file system key or the UID. There's lots of different things. So in this case, we're going to grab the class key and the file system key. And for the per file key, don't worry, there's a diagram coming. Just going over it now. For the per file key, you wrap or encrypt the per file key with the class key and you store it in the file metadata. This is kind of cool because the key is stored in the metadata. So we know it goes with that file because the metadata knows where the file is. You know, it's, it's all keeping it together. So now we've got this metadata with the file key in it. 
and we want to encrypt the metadata and we're going to encrypt that with the file system key and then we're going to put that in the phone story so here I've got the Russian dolls diagram where you've got the per file key which you generated to encrypt the file and you wrap that up in the class key and then you take all that and you put it in the metadata and then you encrypt all that with the file system key and then you store it on the phone now that is the same as this diagram here and which is easier to understand I vote Russian dolls okay so let's talk a little bit about why it was done this way the file system key is not really meant to be like the most secure security really the files are what is what you're trying to protect and those are you know protected with the class key and they're in the metadata and there's you know there's like all kinds of stuff protecting that and so you can do a wipe real easily so you know suppose you you've got your phone set up so that after 10 unsuccessful attempts on your passcode it's going to wipe your phone all that does is that takes that file system key and after that key is gone that's what your stuff looks like it's just you can't read it it looks like gobbledygook so I think that's pretty brilliant in looking at this one way to really understand how brilliant this encryption scheme is is to look at some other things that they could have done now you could have just encrypted everything with the UID that's individual per phone it's hard to crack uh, but you know if that happened when you go to wipe the phone you'd have to just toss out the UID and the UID is burned in so you lose the advantage of that so it just made more sense to create a new key and protect it with the UID but encrypt everything with this other key and that way you can have this file system key that you you know just regenerate a new one every time you want to wipe the phone and you could encrypt everything with the class keys and that would you know that could work to some degree but if you sort of work that through it's still more work than just using the file system key for wiping and the solution they came up with is more elegant one of the things I get asked about um, mostly from clients not people here is about the FBI cracking iOS encryption on that San Bernardino phone and um, really the response to that is no they did not crack the encryption what they did do is they found a company that found an exploit on that particular operating system on that particular phone and it was an exploit that was able to run a passcode cracker so it didn't automatically reset the phone and it didn't have that delay and everything it just it cracked the passcode and once you crack the passcode you can unlock encryption okay well that's it uh, here's my email address if you want to stay in touch